get one seat? Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Please sit for the tributes. tributes. Earl Wellington Payne, also known to some as Chubby Payne, was born to Helena and Owen Payne on May 1st, 1933. It was told 
that as a kid, Earl was a little chubby fella. Thus, he, named, he was named Chubby. Earl grew up with six siblings. Older brother Orville, Fergie, now deceased. Older sister Joyce, deceased. Sister Jeanette, deceased. Younger sis sister Patsy, younger brother Tony, and baby sister June. I need to just mention, almost like brother, is nephew Whitfield, who he would call Chubby, and they ran the streets together. And older, the oldest niece, Glenda Payne Hinkson, whom he appointed himself as her protector during her days in New York, during his days in New York. At the age of 22, Earl left Barbados for New York and resided with his aunt, Clem, and her husband, William. Within a year of his arrival, he was on his way to the Korean War, serving for the USA. In 1960, Earl decided to return back to Barbados. He met Shirley Johnson, and later that year, they were married. This union produced three children, daughter Pauline, son Owen, and younger daughter Juanita. Also, he had his stepdaughter, Annette, to complete the family. After retirement from the footwear industry, Earl once again returned to his birthplace to relax and enjoy life. As fate would have it, he was, as he was cultivating his um, land and growing and reaping, the, he lost the use of his leg, but he didn't lose his determination. On January 24, 2023, Earl said so long to this life. But before, t before he left, he was thanking Anne Haynes for everything that she had done for him in the last few years. Left it behind to mourn his two sisters, Pat and June, and the brother Tony. His son Owen, daughters Pauline and Juanita, 10 grandchildren and 20 great grands. Many uncles, many um, uncle to many, great uncle to many, brother-in-law of Ernest Roy and Keith, sister-in-law of Sheila, friend of many in New York, Massachusetts, Georgia, uh, and other parts of the US. Relatives of the Paynes, Moe, Lashley, Headley, Smith, and Watson family. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. My condolences to the family and friends and the bereaved of everyone here. Good morning to everyone. May he rest in peace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I 
mercy to us grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear in the hour I first be Good morning, church family. Before I go any further, I, um, I want to mention that the person who read the uh, eulogy this morning is, uh, is, uh, is my wife. And um, the duet that you heard here, uh, these were imported from some part of the world to come and sing here today. Um, however, there's, there, there are my <laughs> great nieces there, my niece. This is a uh, son and daughter, and I thank you folks for uh, coming and doing such a wonderful job. First of all, I want to um, extend a, a warm welcome to all of you, both here in the church and those throughout the world who might be viewing via some technological medium you know, those mediums, YouTube and um, Facebook, Zoom, and uh, whatever means. I want to say a special welcome to those viewing from my church in, in Freeport, Church of the Transfiguration, and my church family also in uh, Hempstead, uh, St. George's Church. Now, We are here to celebrate the life of Earl Chubby Doc Payne. 
as my wife had mentioned, they call him chubby because when he was a youngster, he was, um, he was pretty chubby, fat guy. But then he moved on over to the army and he became very thin. The task with which I have been entrusted is to reflect on the life of Earl. As I know it, while he was alive um, here on this earth. But before doing that, I would like to ask a question. Do you celebrate death? No. You do not celebrate death. You might feel relieved because the person might have been suffering from some disease that was causing excruciating pain or other conditions that render him or her uh, <laughs> uh, to be in some vegetative state. And you are happy to see that they are now out of that situation. You know, death has caused much harm. It pitted siblings against siblings, families against families, and for what? Things that we all have to go and leave here on this earth. The other question I want to ask then is, do you celebrate life? That should be a big yes, of course. Why we celebrate birthdays, we celebrate anniversaries. Well, depending on how long the marriage might have lasted, you know, some don't even last a year. You celebrate newborn babies. Even before they are born, we have big parties for them. Birthday showers and all of the toys and stuff that you might have uh, bought. So my friends, you celebrate life. And that's what we are here to do to celebrate the life of our dear brother Earl his new life the one that none of us can celebrate with him until we ourselves shall have departed this sinful wretched corrupt evil world and enter into that house not made with hands eternal in the heavens I know the families have and will be greeted with some, mostly three statements. First one is my condolences, I wish you my condolences. Next one is I uh, have my sympathy. But those are okay. Then there's one that is more frequent than all. I'm sorry for your loss. Now, when they say that to you, you must say, what loss? I haven't lost anyone. You see, when you lost someone or something, you don't know where it is. But I, I know where Earl is. He is with his maker. <laughs> Having the time of his life. Life in eternal glory. He is without any pain. And that's Pell, P-A-I-N, not P-A-Y-N-E, that's his name. He's not suffering anymore. He is enjoying peace and happiness. You know, um, John 3.16 said what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's also saying that, he said, I will go and prepare a place for you, and I am going to come and take you back with me. So, that's where our dear brother is right now. And now, to the task with which I was entrusted, that's reflecting on the life of Earl while he was here on this earth. Now the truth of the matter is I never met Earl in Barbados. For when June, my wife, was courting me, as a matter of fact, maybe we were courting each other. 
Earl was away in the army. He fought in the Korean War, as she had mentioned. But what I know about Earl, or what I heard about him, was that yes, he was a salesman, and that he had a great time. He had a great job doing that. He never lost a sale. That's what I was told. I also was told that he sold an electric fridge to an old lady someplace in St. Lucie. This lady did not have any electricity. <laughs> but Earl told him that electricity was coming soon. And at that particular time, the price was right. <laughs> and if she didn't buy it then, by the time the electricity get there, she wouldn't be able to purchase the fridge. So yeah, the lady bought the fridge. I don't know what happened to the fridge, if it worked, if she returned it or what, but all I know that Earl, he continued his, his um, string, string of, uh, not losing a sale. Now when I moved to New York in 1970, that's when I met Earl. And I came to realize that yes, he was a great salesman and he loved his job. All the years I knew him, he sold ladies shoes. That's all, no men's shoes. He was a very courteous guy. He had his own small tool stool in the store and he had one for the ladies. His was small and the ladies was a little high. So he made sure that they were comfortable. While he go fetch the shoes, he would place the ladies' legs on his while he fitted the shoes on their legs. Now you hear the saying, too big is a fit. Well that was true with Earl. If he brought a pair of shoes to you and it was a bit too big, <laughs> he would retrieve into the stock room, come back a little later with the same shoes. And this time, they fit. You see, he stuffed them with paper and any kind of material. <laughs> but he, was, he made sure that he made that sale. Now, he especially loved selling long boots. This is out in the States, you know, when the, um, the snow fall, you need those long boots. Now, can you imagine why he sold those long boots? Remember, his tool was low and their stool was high. He placed their legs on his leg and he fitted the shoes on their legs. The guy was a very courteous guy, very polite. Earl loved to drink beers. He never drank anything hard. We used to call him the chain beer drinker. Earl would put down a case of beer in a week or less. He was very good at dominoes. I remember one night we were uh, playing dominoes at my brother's place in, um, in Freeport. And um, of course, Earl had to have his bears. We happened to run out of the bears and the stores around there were closed so we couldn't get any bears for Earl. But we had, um, we had dragon stout. Earl drank one of those uh, dragon stouts. And I remember after the domino game was finished, he walked like uh, he was still in the army, stepping high. He stepped so pretty, one of my buddies used to call him the stepper. Earl was also a stubborn fellow, very short tempered. He must always have his way. I remember also 
we were playing dominoes at my house and before the domino game finished he wanted to go home now the person who brought him there wasn't ready so Earl decided that he's not gonna win wait I told you he was a very stubborn guy Earl got up and he walked out out of the house his house was about a mile or so from where we were and the rain was falling now the folks who were taking him home left shortly after that and when they got next to him they stopped told him to get in Earl didn't pay them any mind he just kept walking and the rain was falling I said he was a very stubborn guy that is Earl Penn for you but Earl loved to dress he was a very good dresser and he loved going to church Earl would give almost almost anything to anyone if they needed it so my brother the battle is over you have fought the good fight the victory is won after his retirement Earl built a house right here in Cliff Cottage and relocated to Barbados. My wife said he planted his fruit trees, he made garden beds and planted lots of herbs. Herbs. That seasoning, thyme, you know, that kind of herbs. Not what you guys might be thinking. And yeah, um, I understand one day he um, had an accident with his toe and that caused it to be infected and he eventually had to have it uh, amputated. I remember his brother also, Orville, he had uh, some issue with his uh, toes and he had to get those amputated. <laughs> it's alleged that there's a hospital here that's called the amputation capital of the world. Amputated. Now I say it's alleged. I didn't say that. It's alleged. So I don't want nobody to sue me or anything like that. <laughs> now, after his sister in Boston had passed away in December, Earl became very, very depressed. And that's when he passed away. My brother, may you rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you very much. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Earl. We thank you for giving him to us, family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn 234.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Earl, and we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the first Bible reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in Job 19, verses 21 through 27a. Job said, have pity on me, have pity on me, O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written down, O oh, that they were inscribed in a book, O oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may remain sitting as we sing Psalm 46.
second Bible reading. Good morning, church family. A reading for the Word of God written in John 14, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and it reads, Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where I am, where you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Jesus turned unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No, no one comes to the Father except for me. Here ends the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing hymn 182. said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I speak to you in the name of God, whose Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. As parents and guardians and perhaps even older brothers or sisters, there comes a time in our lives when we recognize that we have a purpose to the persons we have in our charge. And this goes for teachers as well, if anyone here might be a teacher. You have children that have been gifted to you by God and at some point 
you recognize that there's a time when you have to prepare them for life, and I'm assuming you know that begins for all of us at birth. And we do all that we can, as much as we can, to be able to prepare these little ones for the time when they continue to grow. And of course, it isn't something that takes place immediately. We continue to teach, and they continue to learn. And sometimes they make mistakes. And we ourselves, in our own experience as children and growing up in our own experiences, would have made mistakes. We do that all the well now, too, if we are honest with ourselves. But the fact is that there is some type of preparation, that everything that we learn from the time that we are small helps to build us and makes us who we are today. And that today could not just mean this very moment. But today means any time that we face when we open our eyes each morning. And I like to compare such a scenario to what is going on in John chapter 14 and beyond. Jesus seems to be that parent, that guardian who prepares his disciples, if you want to call them his children, his earthly children, for the world ahead. Just like a mother or father, aunt or uncle or some other guardian prepares their charge. And he says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And what we would have heard this morning a few moments ago, so eloquently read, I might say, is part of a discourse that Jesus gives to his disciples as he prepares them for his departure. See, Jesus knew that his time was coming upon him. And of course, from the Gospels, we understand that the disciples did not always realize or understand, even though Jesus would have mentioned it more than once, what was going to happen to him. Jesus was preparing for his death. But in even preparing for his death, he wasn't even really concerned about himself, but he was more preparing his disciples and those who would have left, who he would have left behind on earth. And he gives them such hope that even though not in so many words, that I am not going to be here with you anymore. You can get through each and every day. You can get through each and every situation. I might not be here with you physically, but I am here with you spiritually, is what he's basically saying. And he tells them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. See, these disciples were the ones who spent most of their time with Jesus after he had first called them to be disciples. After he had called James and John, who were sons of Zebedee, brothers, he called Peter and Andrew, away from what they were doing in their normal life. They were all fishermen at that time, those four. And he called them from their everyday activity. And they went without hesitation. They followed Jesus. Perhaps maybe not even understanding everything that he was saying to them or what they might have been getting into. But as that is the call of a disciple. We don't know the road ahead, but we have faith in Jesus that in anything that we experience, anything that we go through, he will always be there for us. We live I would like to think in a world that is constantly evolving. And when I say evolving, I mean that we are constantly growing and developing our minds. We, as one humanity, continue to grow and develop as a people. And this is no secret. Even if we only look back in history, we see how far we have come. But at the same time, as we grow as humanity, we grow as a people, we grow even here as a nation. And we are able to look back and we can see the development of our country over time. We see our development of our people. We see especially the development of technology and how it has been able to help us throughout our daily lives. There's one thing that we probably should keep in mind. As much as we grow and we develop and we age, the more we do this, unfortunately, the less time we have. 
And it is probably a good thing that we keep this in mind. That we realize that even though we continue to gain, we continue to have all of these possessions in our lives, we continue to grow our families and our friendships and our nations. As much as we take the time to grow, time continues to go. So even though we make all of these achievements, we must remember also that time is a gift and we don't want to waste it. And even though we love the things that we have and we love the people that are in our lives, it is something that we have to keep in mind. We're not going to be here forever. And when we take that into consideration, just as Jesus took that into consideration, he prepared his disciples for the world after him. He prepared them and gave them hope to know that all they have to do is call his name and he will be there. We must remember ourselves that these are the things that we have to be aware of in our lives. And it brings a point and a question that we must ask ourselves even today at this time as we celebrate the life of our brother Earl. What is our purpose? What is really of importance to us when we think about life? When we think about where we have begun and where we are at this present moment and where we would want to be in the future, what is our purpose? What is important? I give these questions to you this morning as we celebrate his life so that we too, even though we are in this moment and perhaps in some cases we might be feeling a bit of emotion, whether that might be sadness, it might be despair, it might be anger, it might be frustration, it can be confusion. Whatever we might be feeling at this time, I beg to question and that you might even go away and even ponder upon it. What is your purpose? What is of importance to you? In what we would have heard this morning in the tributes, we heard of Mr. Payne, as I would used to like to call him. He was a father. He was a brother, a grandfather. He was a family man. He was also a friend. And we heard words such as determined, courteous. And I pull this one out, appreciative. When we think about the descriptions that we would have heard this morning about our dear departed brother. And these are qualities, even if it's just those three that we pull out today from his life, that we can all adopt if we don't have them as yet. Jesus, in these words of giving hope, encouraged his disciples to be determined. To be determined that even through the struggles that they might face in life, that they can call upon him and he will be there. Be determined that through, for them, any persecution that they would have faced, that they are doing it for a cause because they believe and trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. The one who they would have spent their time with, that they would have formed a relationship with. We are encouraged to be courteous, just as we would have heard Mr. Payne was courteous. To be kind in every way and in everything that we do, in every experience we have, not just in the physical, but now we have to also say in the virtual, when we use our technology and we utilize our social media and we communicate very diff via different ways, let us be courteous. And one of the other things that we pull out from that is that he was also appreciative. How appreciative are we in our lives? Who did we give thanks for this morning, even though we knew we were coming here? Who can we give thanks to that we have not been able to thank before, or did not think to thank before? I have a minimal experience with Mr. Payne. I asked him one time, I call you Mr. Payne all the time. I, you, you know, I never really call you your first name. What is your first name? And he just plainly said, my name is Earl. Actually, I think now that I say that, that was actually a, um, a, a, a sitcom on TV some years ago. My name is Earl, now that I remember it. But for the little time that I would have known Mr. Payne, Earl, 
there was something that you could tell about him that he was all of these things. He was determined, he was courteous and appreciative. I would have seen him at least, or visited him at least about three times. And each time I go to Mr. Payne, I would ask Mr. Payne, how are you today? And he would always answer, well, I'm okay for now. And he was very quiet. He had this quiet confidence about him, even though we all knew his reality and he himself knew his reality. And he was always, he seemed very spiritual. I was often told, he was even told this morning about his time when he would regularly come to church here at St. John. And so we knew that he loved God and he loved having his relationship with God. But every time I left, as I said, it wasn't very long, but every time I left, he would not forget to tell me, be careful out there. Wherever you go, be careful. And I appreciated that about him because it meant that he was able not just to see himself in his situation, but he was able also to think about others. And this is one of the qualities I think that makes who, us who we are. And it is one of the things that Jesus, especially in his ministry, would have taught his disciples and those who followed him. We not think about ourselves, but think about the other. And so, as he prepared his disciples for his departure, as he thought about them, and as he says to us today, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And so whatever we experience after today, even if we continue to feel the emotions during the time of bereavement, they do happen. We continue to remember that we can hope in Jesus Christ. We can continue to remember that we, not, we need not let our hearts be troubled. We are human beings, so it will happen from time to time. But as we remember this piece of scripture, we remember when Jesus prepared his disciples as they were now continuing to experience a world without him, we too can remember that hope that is in Jesus, a hope that is given to us for our lives ahead and the struggles that we may face. He even told them that there are many dwelling places and he goes to prepare a place for them. And when we hear this, it gives us hope that we know that there is life after death. We would have heard it this morning as well. We celebrate life, and we celebrate the life of our dear brother Earl. And as he prepares a place for us, it reminds us that even though we die in our physical bodies, we continue to live as we rise to new life. It reminds us, even as the sun rises each day, that there is a resurrection. It reminds us of what Jesus would have gone through for us as he would have been the sacrifice for our sins, allowing us now to have eternal life. And so as Jesus rose on the third day from the dead and continues to have everlasting life, so we too, as we trust and believe in him, that we ourselves can have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, we give God thanks today for the life of our dear brother Earl. And we realize and we believe that even though He's gone in body. He's alive in spirit. And that we too can do the same as we trust and believe in God. We trust and believe in Jesus as his son, our savior. As we give thanks, we also want to remember those qualities that he had about him. The contribution that he would have made from birth until death. The contribution that he would have made to his family, those who are here, his friends who might be watching online who are not here and the contribution that he made to wider society. We pray, God, for the bereavement of the family and the friends, that you will continue to feel God's love, hope, peace, and joy throughout this time. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us stand now with confidence and hope.
confess the faith into which we were baptized in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 6 of the booklet. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty. During the singing of hymn 400, a collection we receive for the upkeep of the cemetery. response to the biddings for the prayers shall be hear us Lord hear us Lord for our brother Earl let us pray to the Lord Christ who said I am resurrection and I am life Lord you console Martha and Mary in their distress 
Draw near to us who mourn for Earl and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Come for us in our sorrow. Hear us. You raise the dead to life. Raise our brother to eternal life. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Yes, he was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes, Come for us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Earl who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the parish family here at St. John to extend sincere condolences to the relatives of our <coughs> departed Earl, assure you of the church's prayerful support in this your time of bereavement. Please remain standing for the commendation. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, Rest of Christ to your servant with your saints. Yes. Rest of and pain and no more. Thy desire, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. We are mortal, come of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. Give rest to Christ, to your servant, for saints. Rest sorrow and pain and no more, like a sign, like a last. Let us commend our brother Earl to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Earl, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest before all your saints in the eternal habitation. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Earl. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you. A sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. Amen. I have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, Deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother Earl, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust and we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment both this our brother earl and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight grant this for the sake of your son jesus christ our lord amen almighty god with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not souring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the day thou give us, Lord, is ending. When peace like a river attendeth my way.
Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands prosper our handiwork and can it be
God be the glory, great things he hath done.
The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. May he and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, there's going to be a small repast over at Miami Pot and Bar there in St. Philip. So anyone who wants to join us, you're more than welcome to do so. All right. Sin was great. 